What's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at an all-metal, super small form factor mini PC that's actually got a much more powerful CPU than I thought we'd see in a mini like this. This is from a company known as iCool Core, and this is their R2 NUC version. They've actually got a couple different variants of this unit, but as you can see, it is very, very small. Fits right in the palm of my hand. And with the NUC version, we've got quite a bit of I.O. given the form factor here. It's got a full copper active heat sink built in. The body and chassis is fully constructed of metal. And we've got a pretty powerful CPU when you consider the size here. In this video, we're going to run some benchmarks, test some 4K video playback, PC games, and emulation. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for a long time. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft. But the main thing I usually pick up over here are Windows 10 Pro OEM keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off, bringing the price down to $17 for that key. And keep in mind, this will also work with Microsoft Office products. We'll use code ETA. As you can see, brought it down to that $17 price mark. Personally, I use PayPal just to have that security. So we'll go ahead and check out. They're going to email that code to you. And now we can use that code to activate Windows 10 Pro. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Inside of the box, along with the R2 Mini PC, we're going to get a mounting bracket along with some hardware. We've also got a 12 volt 4 amp power supply, USB Type-C to power this thing up. And they've also given us a new adapter here, barrel jack to USB Type-C, just in case you need to run it off of a different power supply you might have laying around iCool Core is offering a few different variants of the R2 Mini PC. The one we're going to be taking a look at is known as their R2 NUC PC, but the other model they're offering is known as the R2 Pro, and it's actually got four 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports around back. So as you can see, the NUC model is more for, you know, using it as an everyday PC, while the Pro model would be great for somebody who wants to create a firewall, a router, a NAS with this little unit. Four 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports on a mini PC like this is unheard of, and it definitely looks a little odd back here, but I've got this one and we're going to be testing it in a later video running Linux. Over on their website, they do offer awesome support for different Linux distros, and uh, if you want to get in here to change this drive out, all you got to do is pop that top right off. It utilizes a 2242 M.2 SSD. I've got a 256 gigabyte drive here, and this did not come with an operating system, so I'm kind of free to choose what I want to install. I went with Windows 11 Pro with this unit here. Again, with the Pro model, we will be installing Linux and checking that one out later on. When it comes to the overall I.O., up front here we've got two full-size USB 3 ports. One of these is actually USB 3.1, the other is 3.2, so 5 gig and 10 gig. Over on the right hand side, not much going on, a little bit of information, plus we can see that full copper cooler down there. Over on the left hand side, we've got two USB Type-C ports. Now one of these is for display out, the other is actually a USB Type-C audio jack. And of course around back, we've got two more full-size USB 3 ports, another USB Type-C, plus our USB Type-C power in, and dual full-size HDMI ports on this Mini. So recently on the channel, we've been taking a look at a lot of these minis, and most of them are powered by something like the Intel N100, the N97, or even the N200. But with this one here, we've actually got the Intel i3 N300, and with this, we get eight cores, eight threads, so we've already got a leg up on those other N-series chips. It's got a base clock of 800 megahertz and a boost up to 3.8. Built-in Intel UHD graphics with 32 execution units, and this will boost up to 1.25 gigahertz. 16 gigabytes of onboard LP DDR5 at 4800 megahertz. A swappable 2240 M.2 SSD up to 2 terabytes. Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.3, and over on their website, they do have a big list of different operating systems or distros that we can run on this. They're fully supported by the company, and with this one, I've installed Windows 11 Pro because I know a lot of people will be running Windows on the NUC version. But again, when we move over to the Pro version in a later video, we're going to install something a bit different. Okay, so first things first, this did not come with an operating system, so I installed Windows 11 Pro. And I got everything installed, got into Windows, and I noticed everything was a bit slow. 
taking a look at the task manager, it seems that the turbo boost was turned off from the BIOS, and this is going to be really important to get good performance out of this chip. So from the BIOS, I just went to advanced, power and performance, CPU power management, and sure enough, turbo mode was disabled from the factory, which was a bit odd. But as soon as I turned this on, it sped way up. And it seems like we've got a base TDP of 15 watts with a boost up to 28. Uh, performance here is looking pretty good after turbo mode was enabled. I was a little confused because those clocks were way down. So I did a little bit of digging and sure enough, this is something you're definitely going to want to enable. So now we can jump right into Windows. And as you can see, we've got the Intel i3 N300. And on the channel, we've been doing a lot of testing with the lower end N series chips like the N97 and the N100. This has so much more power given that we've got those four extra cores here. No extra threads, but yeah, I mean, it's really putting down some good performance given the form factor here. 16 gigs of DDR5 at 4,800. And of course the iGPU, which is gonna come in more powerful than the uh, N100's iGPU. We've got 32 execution units here instead of 24 in the N100. And when we took a look at the BIOS, we saw that TDP is set from the factory about 15 with a little bit of a boost up to 28. So if I run a stress test here, Checking out core temp, you'll see on the CPU side, jumps up to 7.8 watts here, and this is just on the CPU. We can also load up something like GPU-Z, and now we can throw a load on that GPU, and we're right there at 15. But I'll tell you, while I'm gaming, I've seen this boost up higher than that. So again, this will go over 15 watts when it's needed. Next thing I wanted to check out was some web browsing and 4K video playback. We'll head over to iCoolCore's website. Everything loads up really quickly. Got Wi-Fi 6 here, plus Ethernet if you wanted to use it that way. We're in the NUC model right now. So uh, as you can see right here, here's the R2 with those four Ethernet ports, but we've got the R2 NUC, which takes away three of those Ethernet ports. Got some extra USB here. And yeah, I mean, this is just an all around awesome little mini PC in my opinion. Full metal chassis. Thing is working pretty great. Let's check out some 4K video playback. So we'll go with a uh, Sony 4K demo. And I think we're gonna go with the food demo here. Full screen. Make sure we're at 4K. Stats for nerds. Give it just a second here. And given the fact that the lower end N100 handles 4K video playback, I knew we wouldn't have an issue with the N300 here. We've got stats for nerds going, zero drop frames throughout. And obviously if you wanted to stream, you could definitely do it. We've got YouTube here. You can head over to your favorite website. Or if you've got a collection of 4K videos already, you can just use them natively. You can install them on the internal storage, run them from an external drive. The N300 will play those 4K videos just fine. Now I wanna move over to some benchmarks. And with this, I wanted to compare it against the N97, N200, and N100. Like I mentioned earlier, recently on the channel, we've been taking a look at a lot of these mini PCs with these Intel N-series chips. And the first benchmark we have here is Geekbench 6. We got a single core of 1,256, multi 4,971. Multi is definitely beaten out all of the other chips, the N97, N200, and N100. But if you take a look here, the N97 actually beat this chip out in single core. And that's something I definitely wanna look into through the BIOS. I don't think we're hitting that 3.8 gigahertz clock while we're running Geekbench 6 on this N300. Next, I wanted to check out the GPU performance. So I went with 3D Mark Night Raid. On the i3 N300, we got a total score of 8,441. Definitely pretty decent for Intel UHD graphics. And if we take a look at that N97, the N200, and the N100, you can see we're way ahead of all of them. So obviously, going into this with the N300, I knew we'd be able to outpace those other chips given that we've got those four extra cores. And we're seeing a nice boost in performance over those other chips, but I've got a couple more things to test here, like PC gaming. Then we're gonna move over to some emulation. The R2 is not advertised as a gaming machine whatsoever, but I know what we can do with these little chips. And when it comes to indie games, lighter games, and even older PC games, we can see some great performance out of this thing. Here's Hades 2, 1080p, medium settings, running at a constant 60. Checking out some OG Skyrim here. This is one I always like to test on these little Intel chips. And with this, we can actually take it up to 1080p low or 900p medium settings. 
On the lower end, like N100, we have to take it all the way down to low 720 to get that 60 FPS. But yeah, we are working with a much more powerful chip here. And finally, when it comes to the PC gaming for this video, we've got Left 4 Dead 2. These older Valve Source games are going to work great. We're at 1080p, medium settings. By the end, we had an average of 98 FPS. You can go through, play Portal, Portal 2, Half-Life 2. All of those are going to work flawlessly on this little PC. So yeah, you can definitely get some older PC gaming and indie gaming out of the way on this thing. But now it's time to move over to some emulation. And the first one we've got here is PSP using PPSSPP. 4x resolution, Vulcan back in, and if you take a look at Afterburner, we're only pulling up to around 12 watts here with Chains of Olympus. Looking great for PSP, so let's take it up a bit to some GameCube emulation using Dolphin. I was able to take this up to 1080p using the DirectX 11 back in. This is auto mode released, and I do consider this a harder to emulate game. It's definitely not the hardest for this one, but this always gives me issues on these lower end chips, especially at those upscaled resolutions but we're playing through this just fine at 1080p. And of course, we had to test out some PS2, and this is where it was really surprising, because with this, I was actually able to go up to 4X resolution, which in PS2 terms is kind of 1080p there. We're using PCSX2 with the Vulcan back in, and you could swap over to DX11 if you want to. I just kept it right there at Vulcan. And even with something like Ratchet and Clank, we're getting 60 FPS at 4X. I also like to test total system power consumption with these super small form factor PCs. So while I'm doing my testing, I've got this plugged into a kilowatt meter. And remember, we did enable turbo from the BIOS, but at idle, this is only pulling four watts from the wall. Average 4K video playback, around eight watts. And through all of the games that I tested and emulators, I averaged around 20 watts across the board. And that's total PC power, not just the TDP. That's everything this little thing's drawing from the wall. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the performance the R2 is putting out. And I knew we'd be able to beat out that N97, N100, and N200. We've got four extra cores here with this i3, N300. It's pretty quiet the way it is. We've got that full metal chassis there that really does absorb the heat. The unit itself does weigh quite a bit, but I mean, it's just going to be sitting on the desk by itself anyway. With Windows 11 Pro installed, I could definitely use this as an everyday desktop. But uh, one thing I'd love to do here, at least with the other version, given that we've got those four Ethernet ports, is install Linux on it. Use it as some type of router, firewall. If you're interested in seeing a video like that, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you want to learn a little more about the iCool Core R2 Nook version, I'll leave some links down below. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.